What's up everyone, hope you're doing well. In this video series, I'm gonna start looking through Gatsby JS and I wanna give you first some context as to why Gatsby. You can see I've got my website, hashtag coder.dev up. And as some of you may know, if you watched my last video on five cool things that I didn't know HTML could do, my website is actually made in Gatsby JS. And this is actually a fourth version of my website. So the first version I created in Angular, it was like Angular, I think version four or something. And what I found at that time was Angular is fantastic at making single page applications and web applications, and it's great. But when it comes to creating static websites, it just, it's so fiddly to implement server-side rendering and this and that, and I just wasn't happy with it. And it took actually quite a while for me to figure out how to do that. At that time, I was interested in learning React as well. So I picked up uh, Create React App, which is a React starter kit and uh, start recreated my whole website in that. Pretty much looked the same, just the guts of it were different. And that was cool too, but for me specifically, it was not opinionated enough. I found myself spending a lot of time making all these decisions and having to learn something new every time I wanted to implement something simple. So then I came across Next.js. Next.js is cool. I really like the Zite ecosystem. It was essentially create React app with a couple of plugins pre-built in. And again, it was cool, but I still found myself having to make some of these more technical decisions. I was never really happy with what I had. And then I came across Gatsby. There was a couple of things I was definitely scared about. So one of them was GraphQL. I've never used it before. Uh, I did like how opinionated it is and how a lot of the things that it does come out of the box. So that was definitely appealing to me. As I got into it, I started to really, really like it. And at this point, I actually really love Gatsby. And there's a couple of reasons why. So as I've started learning more about GraphQL, I've started really like it. It just works. It's just nice syntax. It's fun. It's that right balance between hard enough for you to feel accomplished when you, you do something, but simple enough for everything to make sense once you've done it, if that makes sense. I really like their plugin architecture as well. And as you can see, there's almost 2000 plugins. There's almost a plugin for everything. There's a plugin for everything that I've needed. And just to give you a demonstration, there's a robots file, there's your sitemap, anything you want it pretty much is there. And so I've recreated my website and I feel like I've made it better and I wanted to walk you guys through uh, step by step the different aspects of my website as I build new things. I can just teach you guys how I did that as well. My website is going to be open source on my GitHub, github.com forward slash Shalatelli. The link's going to be in the description. What this will let me do, I'm going to go through in a series of videos, how I generated a new project, how I introduced a CSS framework, how I use Tailwind components and Tailwind UI websites to, to help me design. You know, I say design loosely, there's really not much design, but things like... Uh, this little block here on the mentorship page, this little banner here, how I implemented like font awesome for the icons, uh, all the different plugins that I've used and, and what I've done with them. I'll also be showing you how I use Markdown to create my blog post as well, including how I did the syntax highlighting, how I implemented MDX so that I can actually have React components in within my markdown as well and that's really cool i can actually show you an example of that here so if i go into for example this post html can do that this is my post and i'll go to the raw version you can see i've got yeah literally react components embedded into my markdown uh, we'll also go through adding a robots.txt file, adding a sitemap, how I added Google, Google Analytics, how I set up an RSS feed, how I created custom layouts, how I added custom data to GraphQL. A couple of instances there, so I pull in some app config and I just pull that right into Gatsby so that I don't have to load this JSON file and I can just pull that straight in some of my recent videos are there some of my social links are there as well i added a another schema customization for mdx files so there is an is future field that i can use so that i can add a blog post for the future but not actually show it 
because I can just set this Boolean to false. And then finally, I can show you how I deployed. So I deployed my website to Heroku. I just found it the easiest way to do it. And it was really, really simple. There was like one or two additional steps, just adding like a build pack and then just pushing up. And I've got automatic deployments as well turned on. So I'll show you guys how I did that. And then once we've caught up, any new features that I add, so I'm planning on adding uh, comments to each of my blog posts as well. I haven't decided whether I'm gonna roll my own or whether I'm gonna use something that exists like Discuss. I'll probably go the uh, the Discuss route, to be honest, and you know a couple of other enhancements that I wanna do. I'll do that live with you guys as well, so you know we can figure it out together and you get an opportunity to ask questions. And for me, I get an opportunity to learn from you guys if you have anything that, that I haven't done as well. So it's gonna be exciting. So onto the point of this video, I'm just gonna show you guys how to generate a new project. I'm not gonna go into themes or anything like that. I'm just gonna create a basic project that we'll use to scaffold our project on top of for the purpose of this tutorial. In a future video, we will look at themes. So first thing, make sure your development environment is set up. So install Node, it looks like Node version 10 is the minimum version of Node, or at least the recommended version of Node uh, that you guys should be using. So if you don't have that version of Node, definitely go on the Gatsby website, look at the tutorial tab, which is right at the top here, and uh, set yourself up. Make sure you've got Git installed, make sure you've got Node installed, and then uh, make sure you've got the Gatsby CLI as well. So here they say uh, you, you globally installed the Gatsby CLI. I actually wasn't doing this, and I'll show you what I did. So now assuming that you've got everything in place, you've got Node installed, you've got Git installed, you've got your editor of choice, VS Code, or whatever it else, and you've got your terminal loaded. So I'm just gonna load mine. So let's get into it. I'm gonna go into my project folder. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to create a new instance of a Gatsby project. Um, like I just said, you can either install Gatsby CLI globally with npm install dash g, which is the global flag and then Gatsby CLI. I don't do this because I firstly don't like to clutter my development environment with specific versions of libraries and tools like this. So my alternate is using something called NPX. And NPX comes if you if you install NPM, it's going to come out of the box. There's nothing you need to do additionally. It just comes with the whole node npm infrastructure you can do exactly the same thing you can run the same commands as you would with a local version of gatsby cli installed we would do npx gatsby new So ignoring all of this, this is something just with my environment right now, it doesn't seem to affect me getting anything done. The first question it's gonna ask is what is my project called? So we're gonna start with Gatsby tutorial website. And we're calling it that because we're doing Gatsby tutorial and we're making a website. Then it's gonna ask us what starter I wanna use. So is it the default, hello world, blog, or use a different starter? So I'm, a, I'm gonna go for default this time, but what we will do is we'll look at each one of these later on and we'll figure out which one we could have used. Uh, essentially what it's doing is Gatsby start default is the default starter. All of the other starters are built on top of it and um, they just add a couple of other things. So I think uh, start a blog or add maybe some markdown support out of the box and hello world or just add a couple of components just so you can see how the Gatsby team structure their components and stuff like that. But keep it simple. Sweet, so now if we go into our project's main directory, so CD Gatsby tutorial website, let's open up VS Code here. We've got a source directory 
including a couple of sample pages. So we've got a sample 404 page. We've got an index page, which is the first page that will load when we run uh, the develop command. And we'll look at that in a second. Uh, second page, just so you can see how to, to create multiple pages. They've added some images. I think this one, a Gatsby icon, they use as a fav icon. And then uh, Gatsby astronaut, they just display on the website. And then they've uh, given us a few sample components. The first one is SEO. So it's just showing us how we can put in some general site details using GraphQL. And we'll look at this a little bit more later again. And they have already installed a package called React Helmet. I've set it up for us and we can see on our index page, they import that SEO component and uh, give it a title using a attribute and that's how the uh, metadata the title and all of that is being populated on the page there's also a header component so splitting out the different pieces off the page as well and then there's a image component so what they're doing here is showing us how they use Gatsby image which is another plugin that they automatically use to serve optimized images how they do lazy loading so it's really cool to see that they've already done a lot of the scaffolding and they're just showing us what the very basic capabilities are and then finally how they've introduced a layout style and a layout component that we can pull in so again if we go back here they've pulled that layout component in and they've wrapped the components on the index page in that layout as well so just giving us a rundown of exactly how to create the most basic basic application there are a few other files here so there's gatsby browser and actually we're going to use this file to load in our css framework tailwind in this case so we'll look at that later the gatsby config when we install any plugins these are where we uh, set them up and pass any configuration options to them. So we're gonna be heavily utilizing this one. Gatsby node, again, there are some compile time and pre-compile time configurations that we can utilize here. We're gonna be using this for a few different things, loading custom data into our GraphQL, how we set up our RSS feed and a couple other things there. And then finally, Gatsby SSL, which is configuration for server-side rendering. Now let's just hit develop. There we go. It took about five seconds. And what it's telling us is there's two URLs that have been generated, which are localhost and our GraphQL IDE. And so we can look at them both real quick. So firstly, if we go to localhost on port 8000, this is the index file that we were looking at. Uh, there's the astronaut image, and then there's a link at the bottom to go to page two. So this is the second page. There's really nothing to it. We'll overwrite all of this. The other part is if we put three under underscores and then GraphQL, what we get is this. This is awesome. This is a IDE for our GraphQL. It's called Graphical. And what it literally lets us do is write GraphQL commands. So we can look at, for example, as simple as just look at all the directories. So here we're just getting the IDs, but what if I want maybe the uh, directory names, bomb. So we've got an images directory that's been exposed and that's not that interesting. What about all site, which is probably more interesting here. And again, you know, we've got an ID out of the box and we can probably look for say parent, we can look for uh, a bunch of different things here. Site metadata, so we can look at the title for each page. Boom, we've got a site called Gatsby Default Starter here. We can look at the description and we can look at the author, which is all pulled in uh, from our metadata. There's so much we can do here. So this is cool because it gives us a, a really easy interface for 
generating our GraphQL commands. A lot of plugins will add to this as well. You'll see when we add the Markdown and the MDX plugins, you'll see the output uh, in GraphQL here and how we use that. This is all out of the box. I have done absolutely nothing except generate a new starter application. And it was the default application as well. There was literally nothing special added on top. So you can already see the power that Gatsby gives you from the very beginning. I hope you like this. What I am gonna do is the next videos they're going to be very short to the point and very specific to each thing that we'll be doing so adding a csf framework adding specific plugins adding site maps and markdown um uh, creating the layout adding rss feeds and all of that if they have any requests for things you want to learn about gatsby js or anything as we go along please 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 leave them in the comments down below and my final request although i hate begging for it my intent with this whole hashtag coder channel is to create a forum where we can have awesome dev discussions but for me to do that i have to play the game i have to play the youtube algorithm game in quotes and so please if you haven't already hit that subscribe button below like this video it will just give this channel a little bit more exposure and as we grow and as we bring in more opinions, uh, we'll all learn some awesome stuff together. So I hope you have a great day and I look forward to doing this series with you.